have you lining up. Well, they're excited. So, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Sons of Milnir. I am one of your hosts, Fat Thor. I'm Gorgon. I am Cap. And today we are going to be talking all about the future of the MCU. We just had San Diego Comic Con ended a couple days ago. Marvel came back to Hall H after what was it? I think three years away. And they came back with kind of a bang. They uh, announced a lot of new things, a lot of things that are going to be happening in the future. So we wanted to come together, kind of nerd out on all these announcements and just kind of discuss what we're most excited for and, you know, discuss all these new announcements. So I want to start it off with uh, Gorgon. Gorgon, with all the new announcements, let's just kind of start it off. Which one was the one that kind of blew your mind? You were like, holy shit, let's go. It's time to go. Um, you know, I think blew my mind in unexpected ways would have to be the announcement of Daredevil, right? Like for a lot of people, I think that definitely was unexpected for me. Um, I if if I had to narrow it down to three projects in this upcoming face late I'm most excited for, I can't do it. Um, so I think I'd have to narrow it to four. And I think for me, the big four I'm mad stoked for are gonna have to be Quantumania. Guardians 3, Loki Season 2, and Blade. I think those four are just a, a chock full of, of everything I'm into, and I'm really excited for, for those early projects in these next two phases. Hell yeah, I agree. You got, I, I was going to say, we talked about this a little bit before, but Quantum Mania is for sure my top pick. I'm super excited for that one, but I think I got to agree with you. The one that blew my mind the most was definitely Daredevil. I mean, 18 episodes are you freaking kidding me like let's let's That's go yes daredevil is back baby so matt i'm gonna throw it off to you which which one kind of blew your mind the most and same with gorgon what's like your top one you're excited for or top three top is obviously captain america yes. uh, they, there's no denying that but um obviously cap daredevil and you know i'm i'm kind of looking forward to blade I'm not gonna yeah. lie, that's you know that's piqued my interest a lot. Oh yeah, um, definitely Blade is up there somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know about you guys, but I was personally a huge, huge fan of the original <laughs> Blades with Wesley Snipes. The first two Blades were unreal as well. Like that first one, the first one's my favorite. Like that shit mm -hmm. was mad. And see, being so young, watching it at the time, it was like, holy shit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> is this guy real. And then the second one with Guillermo del Toro uh, directing, that one was so, so good. That's my favorite. So, well, you know, the nice thing about Blade is without Blade, we wouldn't have Deadpool, right? Like, sure. Blade kind of started off a, a big wave of comic book movies, but specifically Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds' character in them, he was given Deadpool comics to read as his inspiration, right? Was told to kind of oh. imitate Wade Wilson for his character in that, which in hindsight makes so much sense yeah right and it sparked his love of the character and, and all, everything that's led to him being deadpool today mm -hmm. and right in with san diego comic-con if you guys didn't see there was an announcement made by the writers at deadpool who were basically saying nope marvel's still gonna let us be rated r so far it looks like and so far they're very supportive and just letting us do our thing is with the deadpool team and that's mm -hmm. super exciting to see that marvel's just embracing what deadpool is and just letting it be yeah absolutely so, and that's so awesome i really i didn't know that about ryan reynolds on uh, the blade set so that's super super interesting but hey, so it's on you every day yeah exactly right gorgon's full chock full of useful information <laughs> It's the autism. <laughs> so we discussed kind of the ones that we're most excited for. So, I mean, let's just jump right into it. Let's kind of go through what was announced. I think first we should kind of quickly mention uh, where we're ending off. So phase four is coming to an end. They just announced that Black Panther is officially going to be the end of phase four. So we just recently got Miss Marvel. And that ended with, spoiler alert, the big reveal that she is a mutant. So we do know that the mutants are here and they are coming. And after that, we're going to be getting She-Hulk, which is coming in about a month from now. 
And then after that, like I said, we're going to have Black Panther in November. And that's going to be the kind of cap off of phase four. And they did release a trailer for uh, that at San Diego Comic-Con. And I want to hear from you guys first. Well, what did you guys think of the trailer? For Black Panther or She-Hulk? For Black Panther. Um, I'm, I'm super stoked for the changes to Namor. I, I think it's really cool that they're expanding his lore and making it very unique it's it's rare for me i think as a comic fan to find something marvel does that i go that needs to be adapted to the comics right now right it feels like more often than not we're pushing the comics to marvel to more emulate the comics than vice mm-hmm. versa and and i think this is a change where resoundingly i've seen people be like dude that needs to happen yesterday let's go mm-hmm. right i realistically the craziest most magical thing about namor is that he's raising a culture with with strong women that he's taught to support and respect yet somehow he's still a misogynist right <laughs> like that's that's the most the biggest mystery <laughs> about him currently in comics how did that happen yeah i I like all the mystery and the changes and the intrigue with him being of Aztec origin now. I think it's mm-hmm. a cool change. I'm really stoked for it. I'm stoked to see uh, uh, the Angela Bassett be, be head and queen of Wakanda. That looks sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that speech that she gives in the trailer is like gave me goosebumps. What about you, Cap? Did you like it? Are you here for it? I really liked it. Um... I wasn't expecting to see Namor this soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I was expecting that to be like a, a surprise in the film, but you know, um, I really liked it. I'm hyped for it. See, oh, see the music as well they used for it. Like, oh my God, that was delightful. Yeah, that was super, super good. How they went from uh, No Woman, No Cry, and then mixed yes. in with a Kendrick in there. Oh, that was. Oh so my God, good. that <laughs> oh that shit gives chills. me chills. chills. <laughs> <laughs> So what, uh, but, like you said, you weren't expecting Namor. What do you think about Namor and the like? Gorgon was talking about them changing him from Atlantean to the you know more Aztec origin. I forget, Gorgon. You can uh, remind me. A Loken. What... If I remember right, it's a Loken. A Loken. Yeah. Ah, is that how you say it? I've I been saying so. about T. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I don't. I, really, I, don't I don't really have a. I don't really have a preference for it. Hmm. It's, doesn't really bother me. Yeah, I um, think it's dope. I'm not really, I don't really care about their origins, like their ethnicity and stuff like that. If it mm-hmm. changes, it changes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be 100%, like, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate to the comics for mm-hmm. me to enjoy it, you know? Absolutely. And we were kind of talking about this off uh, camera a little bit, but, you know, I think one, it makes it better because, I mean, Obviously, we've talked about this in, you know, pretty good lengths about how the MCU is not the comics, right? And in this MCU world, like, they're, they're obviously trying to make things more realistic, you know what I mean? Like, oh, if this was the real world, like, how would this crazy superhero stuff, how does that fit in a real world? And I think making him this Aztec origin and having him come from uh, this place that's act. I mean, I think it's from like Aztec legend. So I don't know if it's was like legitimately a real place, but it has roots in real lore of the Aztecs. And, you know, it's like, yeah, the Atlantis thing is cool in the books, but I mean, Atlantis is a fake place. Atlantis is a fake place fairy tale ass place you know what i mean so making it him be from this actual place that is basically the same kind of concept as atlantis you know a lost city that got you know lost from the from the sea so i think it's all around just better it just makes everything better more interesting makes the kind of conflict between uh them and wakanda i think a little bit more deeper because you have like these people that were there for a long long time and got kind of you know, quote unquote, lost to history. And the Wakandans have been there, you know, just as long. So I don't know, to me, it kind of makes that conflict a little more deeper, in my opinion. Yeah, it can also add to, like, how how relatable the character will be as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if if you have someone that's from, like, a similar place to yourself, you're going to relate a lot more than someone that's just from our made up place, you know? Yeah, exactly. Who's being like where's the atlantis representation you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> Again, exactly. it's a fake ass place 
But moving on, so like, so we all love the Black Panther trailer. We're all super excited. After Phase Four ends, we're gonna be opening up with Secret Invasion. I think it is is gonna be uh, one of the next first ones up. Yeah, so we're gonna be getting Ant Man, Quantum Mania, Secret Invasion, and we already know that Secret Invasion is for sure gonna tie in with the Marvels. So I figure we can just kind of talk about both of those since they're pretty much related. I'm personally super excited for Secret Invasion. We know Nick Fury is coming back. We're getting Maria Hill back. And we know, obviously, if you've read the Secret Invasion comics, the scrolls are here. Scrolls are here. They have been here secretly this whole time. We got a little bit of that in the first Captain Marvel. We kind of got introduced to the scrolls. So I want to get your guys' take right now because I have been on Scroll Watch for a long time now. And I am 100% certain that we are going to get a scroll reveal in, in Secret Invasion, maybe in the Marvels, but someone that we know very intimately is going to be a scroll. So both you guys, I want, who's your number one scroll pick? Matt, I'm going to bring it off to you first. Who, who's on your hit list for scrolls? Interesting. Um, brain freeze? I brain freeze. can't think of the <laughs> All right, Gordon, um, let's kick it off to you. We'll give Matt a little time to rack his brain. What do you think? Scroll? I didn't no expect scroll? that question either. Hey, um, I'm keeping my... you all on your toes today, man. Keeping you all on your toes. I'm trying to go through, you know, all the all the main players that we have and figure out who would make most sense to be a scroll. And um, I'm going to go Hawkeye. I Hawkeye. Ooh. Oh, um, I, not Kate Bishop Hawkeye either. Kate Bishop's Kate Bishop, right? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, yep, yep, Clint? yep. Other Hawkeye. Yeah, Clint. I, I'm going to go Clint. Why not? Yeah. Um, he's so does he's that still mean... got a lot of like secrets and weirdness from early mm -hmm. on in his Avenger stuff, like weird, weird dialogue things. It's like, wait, what um, going on? Uh, he's got a weird history with Fury. We know Fury's in bed with the scrolls and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw Hawkeye out. My predictions for Secret Invasion is uh, and and this isn't like a big deal. This is just me speaking it into the universe to make sure it happens. Is that we're getting Jessica Drew Spider Woman finally, and and that Fingers we're gonna crossed. get her on. Okay. Um, if if it turns out that they're giving us Jessica Drew and then it's like, eh, it was a Baranke all along, like, you know, sure, that'll be true to comics, but, like, I'm still going on a fist fight, you know, fighting <laughs> in the streets. Because, like, give me Jessica Drew, damn it. Like, every day I wake up hoping for news that, that the Spider-Woman movie announced with Olivia Wilde, right, is going to give us more updates. It's been over a year. And every day I wake up hoping that, faced with the realization that it probably got secretly canned and turned into Madam Web on the down low. Because mm. Madam Web was announced, had castings announced, and started prelim filming in less than a six-month time frame, which is unusually fast for any movie, let alone a comic book movie. Then for us to find Feige's helping them make it and everything... And then we know that like we're getting secret invasion. I'm mm. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think Sony and Marvel's relationship is better than we give them credit. And I think mm. we're gonna see them work together a lot more. And I think this is is the start for it. But if Feige doesn't give me Jessica Drew, I'm gonna fist fight that hat off his head. Uh, say squaring up on him. Honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I like I said, hey, I'm with you, man. I'm fingers crossed that she'll show up. I don't know how I, I don't know if I would bet my money on it, but <laughs> I I hope for you and I'm I'm on the train with you. But Thank I'm you. super excited. Like you said, I'm super excited for Secret Invasion for all the points that you just said. And I'm super excited to, like I said, I know we're gonna get scroll reveals. And to me, I think, I mean, if you guys were reading comics around, you know, the time Secret Invasion came out, that was like the coolest thing about that event, at least to me, was like the marketing of that event. And it was just like posters of like, you know, Iron Man, like half Iron Man, half scroll or whatever. And it was the whole question of like, who's a scroll? Who's not? Like, is this person a scroll? Like, has this, you know, is this person been a scroll the scroll whole prediction? time? Yeah, you can change it. Not Clint Barton, Clint Barton's wife. I was just about to ask you, so does that Ooh. mean his whole family Ooh. are scrolls or just Clint? That's a good show. 
we have always like you have to she's she's always been important right like she was an agent she knows things right like i but we don't find out a whole lot about their history in the mcu yeah no i feel like if she has a bigger role to play it's a scroll role boom done Damn. like yeah Clint whole, Martin's wife a whole family like of scrolls <clears throat> Uh, well, I mean, I guess that would make the kids half scroll. So, uh, you know, they can shape shift, but only on every other weekend. Yeah, yeah. they're not green though. <laughs> so Cap, do we do this jog your your thoughts a little bit? You got a scroll prediction, or you want to just wait and see how it plays out? No, I, it's it, um, it's not going to be my final. It's this isn't my final answer, but mm. you know, I'm feeling happy, Hogan. Oh, he um, I like he has that. ties to Iron Man, ties to Spider Man. He, he still has ties to Fury. You know, he he knows a lot of info. Like, I honestly love that. I think that's great. I think you just blew you know? Gorgon's top off. <laughs> you just short circuited me. That would, be, <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah, that would, I... that's a that's a great answer, Cap. Plus, it gives uh. I'm not going to attempt a second name because I'm not good with surnames, but it gives John a good, <laughs> it gives him another say, uh, project to run, you know? True. Yeah, I you think might be on to something. Yeah, I think you're on to something there, Cap. Watch it be happy. If it is happy, I'm going to, I'm calling you right away and I'm going to be <laughs> freaking the heck out. If it's happy, Hogan. I every listener listening to this podcast owes Matt five dollars on Cash App to help buy the man a beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got to buy Cap a Guinness. <laughs> nice. So yeah, I mean, shit. Now I feel like any answer that I give is a shit answer because I think that's the best one for sure. <laughs> but I've I've long thought that Maria Hill is a scroll. I know she was like in uh, Spider Man. Uh, not No Way Home, Far From Home. Far away. Like her and Fury were both scrolls. But I don't know. I think that she's been a scroll the entire time. And I think that would be kind of an easier one because, I mean, while she's not like a central character, she has been around since the first Avengers film. So, like, we've known her for a very long time. So, I don't know. I think that Maria Hill would be kind of an easy one to just be like, yeah, That's she's true. been a scroll this whole time. And if I want to pick a big one, though, and this is, I don't really have much evidence for this, but I'm going to say Rhodey, War Machine. Rhodey could I be I was a thinking that. I, I don't have evidence, and he's been announced to come back for a few mm-hmm. more projects lately, but I, I don't have evidence, but I feel like somebody close to Tony makes yeah. sense to have been a scroll this whole time for the way MCU goes. And Absolutely. I. I mean, we know that Fury has had a relationship with Scrolls since Captain Marvel. So to me, it makes sense that he would have some Scrolls in S.H.I.E.L.D. with him, like to kind of keep tabs on things. And what better person, especially in phase one, would they want to be kind of keeping tabs on than Tony Stark? the you know biggest weapons manufacturer in the world it makes sense to me that Rhodey was kind of the plant to kind of keep eyes on because we know from first iron man like they're bros like from you know before iron man days and everything like they're homies so i don't know like i said that's kind of my that that would be one for me that i would be like holy shit like no way Rhodey, are you are you freaking kidding me? Now, if we take this long on every single project on this list, we're going to have like a three hour long oh, yeah. podcast. Yeah. We uh, gotta so everybody, it. I'm just going to need y'all to take intermission, <laughs> stay hydrated. Thanks for listening. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. We'll, 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 we'll speed it up. We promise. Yeah. Well, we've already kind of talked about Daredevil. Uh, we already talked about kind of the Marvels a little bit, Secret Invasion. So like you said, let's keep it moving. I want to talk about Captain America, New World Order. Cap, this is your time. I want to know everything. What? What do you? So, new world order. What does that mean? What do you think it means? Give it. Give me all of it. Right. Well, you see, I have a couple of theories because, like, the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier was titled New World Order, mm-hmm. but at the same time, there's a group in the comics called the New World Order, which Red Skull is the leader of, and it's been rumored that we're getting Sin, like Cynthia Smith, 
Red Skull's daughter in this film. Mm-hmm. So is it is it maybe a, like a mixture of both, like to do with the Falcon and Winter Soldier and the group from the comics, both mixed to one with Sin leading it, you know? Okay. It's um mm-hmm. It has me thinking. It's it's interesting. I'm I'm excited because there's so many so many different theories out there too. Mm-hmm. So do you think you know? Red Skull could be back? Like no, I don't the think Red Skull. No, I don't think he's back. I think it'll maybe not necessarily flashbacks, but mm. they'll come across something and be like, "Oh, right." So Red Skull led this back in the day, mm-hmm. and then everyone's like, "Ah," and then they come across it towards the end, and it's like, "Oh shit, this is Red Skull's daughter." Yeah. You know. I will say, I will add on to that a little bit. Well, I think you're right. I don't think we will see Red Skull just because of the whole, you know, Hugo weaving thing. But yeah. I will say the Russo brothers, which I mean, you know, who the fuck are they anymore? They're not, you know, they're not making the final decisions. But the Russo brothers have said that in, you know, their, you know, Infinity War and Endgame, after uh, Thanos acquires the Soul Stone, that basically frees the Red Skull from his, uh, what's called his duty of guarding the stone. So from what they say, the Red Skull is still out there. And now that, you know, the soul stone has been acquired, he's kind of free to do what he wants. What Whether they're going to pick that thread up, who knows? Again, like I said, you know, they, Russo, I love the Russo brothers, you know, I love the movies they directed, but at the end of the day, they don't make these decisions. So, you know, just because they said that does not make it true. But like I said, I will throw that out there. He could, Red Skulls could still be out there. He still could be doing stuff behind the scenes. But then <clears throat> that brings us to another point. Um, does that put him back to where he left? Does that put him back to 1945? Or does that put him in the present day? That's a good question. I mean, I would imagine if I'm putting my tinfoil hat on, I would imagine that he picked up a couple things while he was on Vormir. Because, I mean, you you can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Red Skull was a very, very smart dude. He was like the yeah, top yeah. scientist, you know what I mean? So I would imagine a guy that smart being trapped on Vormir for however long that was he probably picked up a couple new tricks. So if he is free from this, you know, kind of chain that he was stuck in, I I think, like you said, it brings an interesting question. Is he just like stuck on Vormir? Does he just like pop out, you know, like, hey, I'm going to go to Earth now. So like I said, there's a lot of questions to be answered. But like I said, I'm just going to throw it out there. He could still be out there. Gorgon, what do you think about Captain America New World Order? What do you um, have any theories? I haven't kept up with for? much news on it. I've been waiting to hear what Cap says on it. He's got mm-hmm. me intrigued with this idea of Red Skull's daughter and the idea that, that Red Skull could be out. You know, that's a character where, despite the Hugo Weaving situation, they could absolutely recast. And I don't think mm-hmm. anybody would notice because it's a mask. Well, you know, that guy, be a mm-hmm. that guy that they had for Infinity War, I thought was fantastic. Same. Like, I, yeah, so I, I, I don't see why he couldn't pop back up. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if Red Skull is back, um, Zemo knows. Find Zemo. I, Zemo knows so much more than that man lets on all yes. the time. Um, with Thunderbolts coming up, with Agent Ross in it, right? Like, they could still pull Zemo into helping fund it from the shadows in some way if they don't want to pull Ross's funding it right. Mm-hmm. I... Uh, given the time when it comes out with it and all, I would say find Zemo. Um, Absolutely. I, if, if I wanted to know something shady in the underbelly going on in the MCU world, the person who I would try to find to get secrets is almost always going to be Zemo. Oh, yeah. And he is the original former of the Thunderbolts in the comics. So it would completely make sense to me, like you said, that he, and especially, you know, rest in peace to the, I forget the guy's name, but the actor who played Thunderbolt Ross, unfortunately passed away. So I don't think we're, obviously we're not going to be getting much more of him. So it would be an easy way to like, again, make Zemo the leader of the Thunderbolts. Cause I mean, that is how it happens in the books anyway. But before we move on from Captain America, I do want to ask Cap before we get out of here. I have been on this train for a long time now, ever since Falcon and Winter Soldier. I think that Zola is still out there. 
what do you think? Do you think that we could get Zola in New World Order? Do you think he's done? I don't know. Like they, they blew him up in uh, the Winter Soldier, but it's it's Zola, man. There's no way he didn't have a backup. Uh, like that was his only drive. Come on. What do you think? Do you think he can show up in New World Order? Oh, a hundred percent. I am. Um, that's one thing about Zola. He's never gone. Mm-hmm. He's always somewhere. He's always got a backup plan. A hundred percent. I think he's out there still. Uh, Zola hey, train. Let's go. We're we all haven't on the Zola seen the end train. of him. Yes, thank you. I'm validation. Gargan, are you on the Zola train? I I just had the funniest thought in my head, and I like to imagine Zamo keeps a hard drive somewhere that's like the last relaying re- living construct of Zola, just <laughs> sitting in a bag somewhere in a drawer, and he occasionally pops it out just to mess with Zola and be like, you know, I could literally unplug you at yeah. any minute if you don't do what I want. I... I feel like that's such a Zemo move um, that would absolutely backfire in his face. And if that's how they tell the story <laughs> after what we got in Falcon mm-hmm. and the Winter Soldier, I would love it. I, I think that would just be great. Just eccentric Zemo walks out in a bathrobe holding a glass of Chardonnay. Oh, yeah, I, that's all I keep a hard yeah. drive over there in the drawer. <laughs> underneath like, oh. X Magazine or whatever. Yeah, like, he's like, oh, that's Swiss fuck. Like, yeah, he's in the drawer. What? <laughs> like, I... Hold up, back up, Zemo. Like yeah. I, I need details, sir. Like I, you got explaining to do. Like honestly, yeah, though, I think that could be cool. Honestly, though, all jokes aside, I think that's a very good theory. I think that's probably the most plausible of where Zola is. I think if anyone has or knows where Zola is, like you said, it's our man Zemo. Like in that's basically was his whole mission in Civil War mm-hmm. was uncovering the Hydra secrets with the Winter Soldier and all that. So during all of his you know hydra research there's if zola is out there he would know about it yeah let me it, ask you guys then, because... at some point oh go ahead cap no i was just saying he'd stumble across him at some point looking through, through all the hydra stuff you know mm-hmm, absolutely so let me ask you guys because it feels like this is a natural segue to thunderbolts then mm-hmm. um I want you guys each to give me one character who you want to see on the Thunderbolts, whether that you're excited for, whether it's one that we know is coming or one you really want to see on it. Who are you hoping to see in Thunderbolts? I'm looking forward to seeing John Walker. I know it's, you know, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I was talking with him earlier. But... Let me ask you, I, I think... I don't think Devil's Reign event was necessarily playing ground for the MCU, but I do think that maybe what we got with Villains for Hire, which was setting up for Thunderbolts, was with them putting John Walker kind of as like their head whip to whip them all into shape, right, when necessary on it. Um, Do you think that's something that we'll see in Thunderbolts, that Walker steps up and is like the Captain America of the Thunderbolts? Oh, 100%. Uh, I think he'll be leading. Not necessarily leading, but he'll have the mentality of the leader anyway Mm -hmm. anything goes wrong he'll be the one letting you know you know yeah i agree i think walker's for sure gonna lead the team what about you thor well i think i i won't go too into it because we got to move on but i think the main roster of the team is pretty evident already we got a lot of people that i think are obvious candidates for the team but the one that I'm going to throw out that I really hope uh, comes back and is part of Thunderbolts, I want to see Ghost. Ghost from Ant-Man and the Wasp. We talked about this a little Get bit. out of my head. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Gorgon, we talked about this a little bit ago, but I've Same long brain. I've long been thinking if they did do a Thunderbolts movie that she was my first kind of thought. This was like long before Falcon and Winter Soldier and all that stuff. So I think that it would be great for her to be on the team and it would just be great to see her come back because we know that after, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp, they, that's the whole reason that Scott Lang went into the quantum realm and like got trapped in there for Endgame because they were collecting particles to try and help her. So she's still out there. And if they were trying to help her, it leads me to also believe that I guess not shield obviously because shields disbanded, but I don't know, maybe the DODC or one of these kind of governmental bodies still has tabs on her because we don't really know what happened to her after Ant-Man and the Wasp. All we know is that Hank Pym and them were helping her out. 
as much as I want like redemption for her, right? Because what happened to her is not fair, right? No. I, and and much like I feel a lot like her the way I do Bucky. I feel like they're kindred spirits, and I almost wish I could have Bucky having Yelena Belova and Ghost at a table and almost be like a mentor figure, right? For her PTSD and, and being a government with and, and tool, mm -hmm. right? But Ghost is is kind of different because she wasn't necessarily brainwashed in the way like the widows and, and he was, right? Like to some extent, it's a structure that she got used to and, and learned yeah. to crave and desire. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like once you take everything to her and give her life, she kind of gives me the deal of a character who still needs that structure. Mm -hmm. I, I think she could be an interesting character on the Thunderbolts because the thing about the Thunderbolts that separates it from the Suicide Squad is a lot of the time those characters are there of their own volition right mm -hmm. they're not there trying to earn freedom knowing that hey like it's expected you're going to die because we also might just choose to blow you up at any point in the mission and kill you right mm -hmm. they're they're there to do a mission but they're there usually of their own volition and and if they happen to die in the process sure they're expendable but like the idea is complete the mission and if you survive we'll send you to the next one not you're trying to earn your freedom kind of thing right and yeah. i feel like the structure is something she would crave. And and I, I could easily see Ghost choosing it of her own volition to be part of the Thunderbolts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, again, completely agree. I think that she's, like, like, like I said, my favorite candidate, at least. Like I said, I think the team is more or less kind of set already with, you know, we got Abomination, we got Yelena, we got Zemo, we got uh, John Walker, obviously. Oh. So, you know, there's a lot of players that are already, I think, like, obviously going to be on the roster, you know, so I'm excited for the kind of, you know, other characters, the kind of surprises we might get with the Thunderbolt. But moving on, so Thunderbolts is going to cap us off with phase five, and then we're getting into phase six. And this is where the real juicy nuggets come in. This is where we're all going to have to put on our tinfoil hats a little bit. So in phase six, we are going to be kicking it off strong with Fantastic Four. Finally, the Fantastic Four are coming. And then we're getting two Avengers movies, Avengers Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars. Secret Wars, the big, big event that everyone has been talking about. Everyone's been clamoring about. I personally was very surprised that we got a Secret Wars announcement I personally thought I knew Secret Wars was coming, but I thought they were going to hold off for a little longer on Secret Wars, which that just makes me think that there's going to be a lot more crazier things in Phase 6 that have, haven't been announced. Because if they gave us Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty, like I said, it makes me think that there's some crazy things in Phase 6 that we you know, have no idea about. But I want to get your guys' thoughts on this, which... Which one of those are you most excited for? I know those are all huge heavy hitters, but what are your thoughts on phase six? What's the one thing that you're super crazy about? Gorgon, kick it off to you first. King Dynasty. Yes. Fantastic Four Secret Wars. That's a surprising I, list. Those, I'm I I Kang in the last few years has really fascinated me as a character, picking up a lot of his stuff. And they had a great mini with him this last year, right? Uh, no, no left to conquer but my own or whatever, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I thought it was a great little story. I liked it a lot. Um, I Kang has become fun. Jonathan Major's portrayal at the end of Loki on it left us all just absolutely terrified, right? He played a almost jovial variant of Kang and yet even in his happiness state was utterly terrifying I I'm very excited to see what he does when playing a traditional I am here to conquer you Kang mm -hmm. um I yeah I'm really looking looking forward to that I with him coming in with the the quantum realm right pre presetting that first with all the multiverse stuff in it I'm crossing my fingers that with Fantastic Four, we get Maker. I, I know Ooh. I'm very biased, obviously, <laughs> to watching more stories with Maker. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think it would make sense if, if Krasinski stays as our main Reed Richards. I don't see him as Maker. I don't see mm. him playing 
or Reed Richards who would torture children and laugh about it, who would make jokes about, you know, I'm supposed to anesthetize you for this, but who gives a fuck? And then electric, <laughs> you know, like electric torture somebody. I don't mm-hmm. get that out of Krasinski. Um, yeah, no, not him for but, sure. Uh, but I've said it before on Twitter, Dane Meehan, I think that's his name, right, that, that I'm a huge fan of. I feel like he would make an excellent maker uh, and and portray that, and I'd like to see him be it. The guy who played Goblin in the past. Um, I was just and, about and to say uh, Goblin oh. from the Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> yes. So from that, and then uh, from Chronicle, he nailed mm. being being evil in Chronicle. Right. He's a creepy I, I dude, man. I definitely think he could make a great maker, and I I feel mm. like with Kang and all that time frame wise, if there's a tr- a chance to drop maker or leave hints of its existence, it's right there. Mm -hmm. um and yeah i like that so far for fantastic four we're not getting an origin story we're just jumping straight into them i think that sounds bomb Mm -hmm. and then secret wars is at my bottom just because like you said there's a lot of yeah there's a lot of hype for it because it's this big event it feels like a lot of stuff's building to it but there's a lot of missing pieces Mm -hmm. and a lot of for lack of better term loose arrows flying in lots of different directions and we need them all to kind of converge on their path towards that at this point Mm -hmm. i feel like so for me, it's at my bottom of hype of those three because I, I I need all the arrows to line up and point. And I think that's really mm-hmm. the point of phase five is, right, get all those things in place and, and push mm-hmm. them towards this convergence event. But we're not there yet for it. Mm-hmm. So I it's it hits my bottom of hype for me. Yeah. And I will also put it out there, too, that these are just the three that have been announced for phase six. There's a lot of other properties in phase six, and I would not be surprised for even the dates that they announced to shift dramatically until we know once we finally get there. I mean, if you guys look back, you know, on like phase two and phase three announcements, it's completely different than mm-hmm. what we actually got. I also- what's your what's your hype on these? What's where's your yeah. level? Um mine's with a Kang Dynasty at the hypest of hypes mm-hmm. uh, and then it would go Secret Wars and then Fantastic Four um, Kang Dynasty mainly because it's Kang <laughs> <laughs> like you say Jonathan Majors played mm-hmm. it fantastically in Loki but mm-hmm. um, you know what's really got me excited have any of you seen that leaked footage from Ant-Man Quantumania where Ant-Man is talking to Kang I've heard the like the transcript, like I know what's said, but I haven't actually seen it myself. Yes, well, I stumbled across it. Was it yesterday? And he's hey, like, um, send me that, bro. Yeah, <laughs> God comes up to him and he's like, uh, "What was it?" He's like, "I'm an Avenger," and Kang's like, "Oh, you're an Avenger. Have I killed you yet?" And then it's like, "Oh my God, dude, and yes, that, that is." The coldest, the coldest line ever. I thought, like, when I heard that, I was like, oh, shit, let's go, dude. And that kind of goes back to why I picked Ant-Man Quantumania as my number one for Phase 5 is just, I think Kang, one, we talked about already, Jonathan Majors as Kang is just incredible, in my opinion. And I think that Quantumania is really going to set us up a lot for where we're going to go in phase six it's going to not necessarily set up kang dynasty itself but just the idea of kang is everywhere he is throughout all time he you know it all begins it all ends with kang and i think he is going to be playing a major major role in all of these properties going forward through phase five and I think, like you said, Kang Dynasty might be might be my top, I think, even over Secret Wars for the same exact reasons that you're saying. And I'll also throw out there, too, it was just confirmed that Kang Dynasty is going to be directed by uh, Dustin Daniel Creighton. I hope I'm saying his name right. But the director from Shang, uh, Shang-Chi, he is yes. going to be directing <laughs> Kang Dynasty. So that alone makes my hype even way above because i love shang chi and not only do i love it but he is a great director i think and i think he really understands these uh kind of stories and not only that but his action sequences are amazing so having him uh hold up an avengers movie is win-win in my book i think it's going to be incredible i think we'll see kang to at least a kang 
not our yes. Kang, but a Kang. Yeah, we should Loki specify there. We um, should specify there are many Kangs. He goes by many names, and when we say that Kang is going to play a huge role in all of this, we don't mean just one singular Kang. We mean you know right. all the types of variants of him. But I definitely think we'll see a Kang again in Loki season two. I'm going to be honest for all oh, yeah. of our listeners and viewers out there. Um, after Guardians 3 and Loki Season 2, when we do recaps on those, I need y'all to just in advance prepare that Gorgon's just going to be weeping the whole time. <laughs> um, I, I'm already predicting those two are going to break me as a person mm -hmm. to watch emotionally, right? I in, We're allegedly going to see Rocket confront his, his maker and everything about him, and I... Guardians 2 is still my favorite MCU movie to date, um, if y'all don't know that. And mm -hmm. it's the whole, like, and it, and it's, again, it's a stereotype, right? Like, I, Gorgon has a thing for broken people inheriting broken burdens from others and the broken burdens of themselves, right? It just is what it is. And maybe it's because I have a very broken past to my own. Um, but Rocket and Yondu's I know who you are, boy, because your me speech hits me every time. And for Rocket to finally deal with his PTSD, this what am I, who am I, confront his maker on the pain, the torture, I'm going to ball like a baby <laughs> um, in screen. And Same. then Loki season two, right, the, the set photos we already have show Sylvie at like a 70s McDonald's in that dingy, dirty brown uniform with a cigarette in hand and like a greasy McDonald's, right? Like oh, what has I happened to Sylvie to put her there, mm -hmm. right? This this goddess of, of humans, right? And, and sorts there. I What happened to break her to put her there? I After the ending of Loki, where the whole like, I just want you to be happy had me weeping in tears, Mm -hmm. I feel like those two projects are just going to leave me an emotional puddle on the floor. <laughs> um, and I am we'll not tissues. ready for those. We'll bring some tissues for you. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, no, I'm excited to, to see, like you said, where Sylvie uh, ended up, what happened there. And like you said, it's just, it's going to be an emotional ride. I think a lot of these are going to be an emotional ride. People joke and say like phase four was the phase of trauma. But I think, you know, phase five and moving forward is going to be after dealing with that trauma. You get what I, I mean? mean? Like we go Guardians, we go Loki, we have Blade, which is, I'm going to say right now, I'm calling it Black Knight is going to appear in Blade, right? Which is his story is nothing but pure trauma, 25-8. <laughs> I, we're going to have Agatha, which is just, she's hell bent on, it ends with her very much in trauma, and it's going to go straight probably to her causing trauma, because that's who Agatha is. Mm -hmm. It's, I, they want, we have Daredevil. Matt Murdock is the walking embodiment of undealt with trauma, right? Mm -hmm. I, we want to talk about a trauma phase. It's about to hit it hard. Yeah, Absolutely. Like I, ugh, just even talking about Daredevil again makes me so excited. But Hello. I want to ask you guys. So with Phase Six, what is like I said, we have a lot of properties not announced. What is? I know there's probably a lot that you guys can think of on the top of your head. But what's one project that one that you hope to see and that you think is most likely gonna come in Phase Six? Yeah, I'll throw it to you first. What do you think? It looks like you got something brewing in your mind. <laughs> so one I hope to see is a Steve Rogers project. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Steve on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, One I think we'll see in Phase 6 being possibly maybe Deadpool. Okay. Because yeah, I think we that's... have. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, We've got confirmation that we're getting a Deadpool film, but it all depends on the timeline as well. It's mm -hmm. it's a tricky one, but probably Deadpool or ah Deadpool or I'm not sure actually. I think Deadpool is a great a great answer i think like we, we talked about earlier we know for sure that deadpool 3 is happening which i i mean i don't know if it'll technically be deadpool 3 since it's a new studio but we know it's coming so i think 
it's obvious that Deadpool will for sure be somewhere in phase six. I think the big question is where in phase six before secret yeah. wars or after secret wars? Cause obviously secret wars is going to do a lot with, you know, the whole multiverse thing. So I think that's going to be a big question. Does he come before or after? Actually, I, maybe a Dr. Doom project actually. Tie it in the secret war somehow, oh, 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 oh. and then Kang. There's that, mm-hmm. you know, that relationship between Kang and Doom. Now nah, you're cooking with gas. I've heard a lot of people saying that they think that Doom is going to take uh, the role in Secret Wars as the kind of main protagonist. And I mean, if Fantastic Four is coming before Secret Wars, I think that's entirely possible. I um, I like the idea, but I don't want doom to overshadow kang i don't want those two mm-hmm. being like both the protagonist i want you know i want them to have their own time to shine i don't yeah. want one being overwashed by the other you know absolutely i think kang which i think he'll definitely come back but i think the you know kang dynasty will kind of wrap up kang's kind of a uh, villain arc if you will so like you said i wouldn't want them to be kind of battling each other you know kang versus uh doom because they're very similar but they're very very distinct characters but gorgon what do you what do you think what's one that you're most ex- or that you think we'll see in phase six and one that you're hoping to see in phase six i think in phase six and i i don't know what project it would be but i think by phase six we should have our first look at symbiotes in the MCU. Oh, okay. Um, I right. Where was No Way Home? Right. Was that mm-hmm. end of Phase Three or early Phase Four? Phase Four. Yeah, it makes no sense to have a symbiote brought into this main timeline, this universe, mm-hmm. and just do nothing with it for two seasons. Given how big the hype is to get symbiotes back in the MCU, that yeah. if, if they don't do that, that's a disaster. Um, like that's an absolute disaster and spidey twitter symbiote twitter is is just going to revolt against marvel at that point so Mm. i think by then we'll have our first look at symbiotes in the mcu absolutely i I would like to see a the union project Um, i during the king and black event we got a the union mini for a couple issues and a lot of people really slept on it and i get it the union's a very weird ragtag bunch of almost if if we're being honest with them they're almost thunderbolts level heroes promoted in in the uk as if they're avengers level right it's this Mm -hmm. weird dichotomy um but we just had the potential union jack leak right that we were talking about in the chat and, and I feel like if, if we're going to set up for this new world order and stuff, right, and everything, it makes sense to explain how big, like, Fury's influence would have been or connections he would have had around the globe and things, right, and, like, where, where that would have led to things. I, I mm-hmm. definitely think setting up for more global level heroes is obviously where we're headed right where we're making namor of aztec origin where we're increasing the importance of wakanda right we're going to get another shang chi project right like the global impact of heroes in this world is increasing i think is a major focus i think it makes more sense than ever for us to get to the union project and i'd really like to see the union i think have a disney plus show i think Mm -hmm. would be really cool if if not a movie, I think a D plus the Union series could really slap. Yeah, I agree. And I love that answer too. That's something I would have never thought of. So like I said, I really like that. I think that would be super cool and interesting. I think, like you said, Disney plus series might be a little better, give a little bit more time to introduce everybody and kind of get more into that. But yeah, I love that. I wasn't expecting you to say the Union. To be fair, that took me by surprise. Mm-hmm. That was really out of the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, right? The symbiote guy is like, no, no, but these British ragtag heroes, right? (laughs) Like, yeah, but but for real, though, I, in in, in the King and Black Union series, if you guys haven't read that, listeners, watchers, I do highly recommend it. It's a fun little mini. It doesn't do a whole lot really involving the the King and Black event. It does to a T with what's going on, but more it really focuses on 
Britannia is truly the first Earth victim of King and Black, right, and and Noel's reign, um, right. Immediately before everything's going on globally, they come down and bam, Britannia's taken out right off the bat. So everything gets passed off to Union Jack, right? Like, pick up the sword and go. Mm-hmm. And and it's him trying to get this ragtag group of like Irish and and UK heroes all together. There's a character introduced called Snakes, who who very much like I am Groot, just says I am Snakes all the time. <laughs> but like, it's because Snakes is literally a sentient group of snakes. I oh, in a shit. French cup, right? <laughs> like I am Snakes. That's so. Like, and it was, <laughs> menacing and terrifying and then you have kelpie which is this this water this irish water sprite right um doing crazy water bog witch level stuff going on i and i would love to see like a menacing like irish lore you know Mm -hmm. deity brought into this i think that could be super cool as we step into the ground of more you know mysticism and more Mm -hmm crazy stuff like that with Agatha with Blade coming in and vampires, right? Let's bring in more mythical lore in. Let's let's get water sprites and stuff. And and where else to get one from than the place where they're most menacing Irish lore, right? Like let's let's bring it in. Let's go hard. Yeah, I think the Dude. union's a really logical choice. Dude, let's go. Sprites. I'm team sprites. <laughs> I'm, I think that's super I'm cool. I'm gonna go ahead and look for one tonight. Yeah, Cap, go <laughs> capture one for us. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think you're right on the money, though, Gorgon. I totally agree. I would love to see more of the kind of mystical side of you know the MCU, and I think that's kind of, that's more or less the route that we're going. So, I think Union series would be fantastic. I think that's a fantastic pick, Gorgon. So one that I hope to see which i don't really think that we're gonna get because we already have two avengers films in uh phase six but i'm really surprised that we didn't get this announced and i'm still holding out hope for it uh young avengers i think that you know i would love to see a young avengers uh movie and i really thought like i said from my own personal theory i really thought that that's what uh, was going to be one of the big reveals as opposed to Secret Wars. I thought we were getting Young Avengers because I think they're just they're setting it up way too well in the series and the movies and stuff for them not to be going that route. But the one that I think we're going to get uh, I think we're going to be getting a Mutants project for sure. Not necessarily X-Men. I don't want to say an X-Men movie or show yet, but something dealing with Mutants. So I think for sure phase six is going to be where that starts off. And again, that's going to be the one that I think I think is most likely to be within that uh, phase six slot. And I think kind of going back to, to my point earlier, of the, if they announce Secret Wars, Fantastic Four and Kang Dynasty, I feel like there's got to be another heavy hitter in there that they're keeping away from us. And I think what bigger of a hitter than, you know, mutants and the X-Men. So there are two theories on that. I don't know if you've heard, um, but apparently the way the Fox rights coming back into play was, is although it's Marvel own right ship still like sets with till 2025, it would have to be as Fox renditioned it. So that's how come we haven't got any mutants that are big ones, you know, like we'd expect yet. So like having Kamala be one, right. And I expect we'll probably have more and more trickled in throughout leading up to 2025 and mm-hmm. then what as soon as it's all 100 percent marvel then jumping into the big mutant project there's a theory there on that and then you mentioned deadpool cap i love um because of the working theory right now is for deadpool to come in with all this fox stuff with it they're gonna almost do deadpool kills the marvel universe but instead having him kill the marvel universe have it be like a he's going to help aid the convergence of the timelines, right? To put it in Kang terms here, Mm -hmm. there's going to be a convergence. And in order to converge fully, certain characters will make it, but others have to die. So they'll have him doing a crazy montage of him slaughtering, like, the Brian Singerverse of characters. I would love that. I love that. I don't know if it would happen because it sounds like, I don't know, too good to be true, I guess you could yeah. say. Like, I don't know if they would really do, like, okay, you're going to just kill all these other actors off and just, like, fuck them. But I would love it. I, I hope they go that route. I really yeah. do. 
I, well, and Deadpool occasionally gets roped into some big picture stuff, right? Like oh, yeah. it really does. Mm-hmm. Um, and and him having to doing Deadpool kills the Marvel universe, but instead of kills the Marvel, we take that concept and kills this previous universe so these two universes can collide into each other seamlessly right because he's a self-aware character Mm -hmm. which i think be really interesting of a way to take him and make his big picture stuff feel less goofy but still goofy and still big picture yeah i think that's a fantastic idea gorgon i love it yeah like i said i think mutants are coming and i think that it's going to be built over a while like again i don't think we're gonna it's not gonna be like oh x-men movie like we're gonna be getting maybe a mutant show or you know maybe a movie kind of introducing us to it or i think they're gonna build the x-men at least that's my opinion like i said i could be completely off now and i'm gonna place my bets that we get miles morales either before we get young avengers or in young avengers because he was announced his name is dropped and everything right from our very first spidey project Mm -hmm. i i definitely think at that point if fox and stuff rights are 100 percent over for a lot of that with it then we might as well jump hard and Mm -hmm. i i think part of the hang up for young avengers might be that Feige knows how important my bullet miles is to the fandom and maybe he's waiting to have all of his ducks in a row before he drops it yeah true. Um, because i'm pretty sure right now miles is in a chokehold at sony right now like mar even if feige wanted to he couldn't make a miles movie like that would fall under sony sad so sad but like you said though there is hope like you we've talked about before it seems marvel and sony have been playing ball better than ever before so while right now the ball is in sony's court i mean we got a lot of time until phase six we're talking all this stuff we got to remind ourselves these is these movies are still years away at this point so there's a lot of time for things to change a lot of time for deals to be made behind the scenes So, like I said, we look back at phase two, phase three, there's a lot of changes that came until we finally actually got those movies. So if there's something that wasn't announced that you were hoping for, something that has been announced that you're like, what the hell is this? I will urge everybody to just be patient, see how it plays out. Because Cap, I'm sure that you remember this pretty well, but originally Winter Soldier was called Serpent Society and yeah yeah and they completely were just like yeah just kidding like that's fake so who knows there could be one of these projects up here that's completely a red herring and they're gonna change Actually, it to I something throw else on to that so cap what uh so you brought up red skull's daughter earlier um in it yeah. and stuff um I want your take on it. Do you think it there's a there's a theory that the Serpent Society piece was rewrote in order to be this new world order project later? Um right. Ooh, interesting. <clears throat> How do you feel about that as the cap expert? I would very much I think I would like that, but at the same time I'd also like a Serpent Society project just solely about them. I like it. I like that idea actually. I like it. I saw some chat on Twitter and I wanted your piece too before we get out of here on it. What do you think is the chances of us ever getting Hydra Supreme in the MCU? I I honestly can't see it. Yeah. No. You know, it, dep- it depends how long the MCU goes for, you know. Um if it's got another fifteen, twenty years, maybe. Um definitely not with Chris Evans, but I can't see him coming back and playing Hydra Supreme. <laughs> um I, I just, no, I don't think so. I'd yeah. love it, don't get me wrong, but I can't say it. Especially with his recent comments on returning to Cap, I don't think Hydra Supreme would be the thing that's like, oh yeah, I gotta come back for that. Like, I, don't, I think yeah. he'd be like, nah, I'm good, man. That's fair. But who knows, in all, I, if we're gonna get Hydra Supreme, my best theory would be like just a quick multiversal thing. And not not it be Chris yeah. Evans, but just like have a cap from the multiverse, like just kind of pop up and be like, "Hail Hydra," you know, whatever, and just kind of you know fuck off. That's the way that I could see him popping up. But also, again, even just talking about it, kind of jogging my memory. I think the whole Hydra Supreme kind of came and went with the one joke in Endgame, where Cap says, "Hail Hydra" in the elevator. I think that's like their 
like they referenced it, they made the joke of it, and they're just never going to talk about it again. At least that's how I kind of took it. Or um, I could have made I could have made like a branch timeline, and that's the timeline that Hydra Supreme is in. Oh, okay. You so know, Cap's could, going the complete other direction. He says that confirms it. Okay, so I like that. Could have come out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. A lot earlier, Cap, you know? tinfoil had it speak into existence <laughs> hey okay i'll be the odd man one because i honestly love that so i'll be wrong on that i'll take the o <laughs> <laughs> so before we get out of here let's just let's solidify right now uh for phase six so we're all going kang dynasty then that's the one we're all most pumped for Bang yeah. yeah i'm kang gang all day long baby let's go there you go. Gang gang. Oh yeah. Gang gang. But a lot of this stuff could change. A lot of this stuff may happen, may not happen. So I urge everyone just be patient and let's just enjoy the ride. We're eating so good right now. We have so much content coming at us. It's honestly mind blowing. And if there's one project that doesn't speak to you, I'm sure one of the you can find one of these that you can somewhat enjoy. So I urge everybody to keep an open mind. Do you guys have anything else to say about Phase 5, Phase 6, and the future of the MCU? Pray for Steve Rogers. <laughs> Pray for Steve. Gorgon, you got That's anything fine. else? I'm going to make it through a whole episode without saying it, I promise. Um, I <laughs> promise. Um, but yeah, I, I do feel like, you know, if, if, in, if by Phase 6, there hasn't been anything come to fruition on, on that symbiote doing something in the MCU... I I think something's definitely wrong. So I think just keep your eyes peeled out there, Hive, because we're gonna start seeing seeing the little pieces start to build. Yes, sir. I'll say it for you. God is coming, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'll say it for you. So you can make it through one episode without your catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't me. It wasn't you this time. Well, thank you everybody for coming and checking us out. Uh, We really appreciate you guys checking us out. Follow us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, basically wherever you get your podcasts. Drop down in the comments below. Let us know what project you guys are most excited for. Phase five, phase six, past phase six. Let us know your crazy theories. Obviously, we love uh, talking about this stuff and discussing it. So let us know what you think. What are you most excited for? But with that, that's kind of all I got for us. So you guys have anything else for the people? Stay hydrated. Yep. What Gorgon said. (laughs) Stay (laughs) hydrated, everybody. May your stacks be fat this week. And we will catch you guys all next time. Thanks for joining us. It's been wonderful, guys.